following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the December 13th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. Uh, but even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, we've got you covered. Send an email. Send it off early if you would. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And in a subject heading, please put radio show question. If you're inside the Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Slightly mixed bag out there. Most of the U.S. indices that we're looking at are trading the upside. Dow's up two points, flat. Eight points for the S&P, 47 points for the NASDAQ, four points for the Russell, nine points for the semis. We can't expect the markets to get too far ahead of themselves one way or the other with Fed Powell coming out with his interest rate decision at uh, 2 p.m. And then we go into the... Uh, we go into the uh, uh, Q&A session that begins at 2.30. So all the fireworks should start between about 2 and I'd say probably about 3.30 in the afternoon out there. In the meantime, we're going to go take a look at all the, the instruments that we can or that you've got requests on, try to figure out what they're communicating to us. Now, the interesting thing here, if I were to uh, give a, a poll right now and ask this question, if you believe that, uh, that uh, uh, rate cuts are going to make – now I say rate cuts – so plural, not just one, not like a one and done, but how many people out there, I should really figure out how to phrase the question, how many people out there believe that the markets will move higher if the Fed starts cutting rates? Got to think about that. We're going to go find out the answer to that, or at least what the uh, historically, what that, uh, what that typically results in. But it's not really what you think. In other words, if uh, just staying on this chart, this set of charts right here, we take a look at historically. Now, this is a monthly time frame, so we're getting a bit of a bigger picture here. But the bottom portion of the screen is the S&P 500, and the top portion of the screen is the 13-year Treasury bill. So it gives us a pretty good idea what interest rates are actually doing here. And what we can see, let's just start here on the right-hand side. We'll move back towards the left. So we'll start with current data. What we know here is rates have been rising. And if we take a look at the S&P 500, we know about that big bottom that formed out here. This is a monthly chart. In the October time frame, on a closing base, it was really September because we're just looking at a line chart here. But we can see that the S&P 500 has been moving higher with the interest rates moving higher as well. Is that unusual? Heavens to Betsy, whoever Betsy is. No, it's not even close to unusual. Let's take a look at the last time that uh, rates were started moving higher. It was in that September uh, 2015 time frame. All the way, rates were moving higher all the way through 2019. What did the S&P 500 do? That moved higher. When rates started moving lower, there was a period of time here when the uh, market uh, – uh, rates were moving lower and the market continued moving higher, but then it finally just caught up. Rates were moving lower and so too the market. In fact, we can take a look if we come back here, you know, during difficult times, the 2000s, who's to say we're not in a difficult time now? We had interest rates start moving lower. What happened to the S&P 500? It moved lower as well. When interest rates started rising, what happened to the S&P 500? It too started rising. If we take a look at the 2007, 2008 timeframe, rates are coming down. What was going on with the market? The same kind of scenario out there. So 
So the thought process that if we if interest rates get lowered, that the market is going to zoom to the upside, I could just simply deny we're not talking about one and done. All right, which which may or may not happen. I doubt that it happens today. But if we're on a consistent basis of rates falling out there, which I don't think that's what we're in, but just to kind of make sure that we're looking at the data and we're analyzing the data and we're not dealing with the you know emotional BS that's out there, or somebody thinks that hey, if rates are lower than the market, I mean, because if you listen to the financial media. I know which I usually have on the background, flip between a couple of different shows out there. That's what they would have you believe. And you have to ask yourself, what the heck are they smoking or drinking out there? Are they not looking at this same chart here? Look, we don't have to just stop there. What we can do is we can go take a look at – so I'm looking at the charts, and I see that they are coming out kind of blurry. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. That's really wild. So we don't know what's going on with the system here, and I'll apologize for that. Not that there's anything I could do. If there was something I could do, I would do it. But I see what you guys are looking at on your end. That is the craziest thing. When You can see when I do post – Charts And for example, uh, I'll do that right now. I will go ahead and post this chart into the Tiger's End. That way you guys will have it. Now, I've got to, if you give me a moment here, I've got to save it as a file. But I'm just going to take this off the same screen here. So I'm going to snap, uh, snap, crackle, and pop this chart. So we're going to save this. This is, uh, we'll just call this interest rates as soon as it gives me opportunity interest. Oh, man. Try, try, trying to... Uh, save it in the wrong spot give me a second here to change that because i'm interested just to make sure that uh, we can try to figure out what's going on here so i'm going to post i just took a snapshot of that so at least those of you in the den you're going to actually get a, a live a live a, a better version of this so that's right here now um it's going to be easier for you guys on your end if you can tell me is that chart much clearer this is to be helpful for you folks in the den. Is that chart that I just posted inside the den, is that much clearer than what's coming through on Tiger TV uh, for you? So just, uh, just so we can try to nail that down. What I'm going to put up next on the screen, though, is I'm going to put up the uh, I'm put up the Dow, and we're going to take a look at the seasonal pattern. So that chart is much clearer. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Dan. So, you know... That's we're gonna have to really try to figure that one out, Al. So it's got to be a Skype issue then. Must be a Skype issue. Your live one is in and out of clarity. Yeah, I know. And we're really trying to figure that out uh, out here. Nothing has changed, you know, on my system. Maybe a few updates or something along the way. In any event, I apologize for that. We'll try to fix it. I'll do what I can. Uh, here, what we're looking at is we're looking at the last 25 years, the last quarter of a century. Of uh, this are Fed rate cuts, so you can take a look at what uh, during Fed Fed rate cuts. At least you can take a look at behavior ten days after that. Now I'm not saying that we're getting a Fed rate cut today, but if you wanted to understand what we just took a look at on the longer term, the larger scale with regard to rates falling and what the and how the Dow or the S and P 500, we were looking at the S and P 500 uh, earlier, how they respond. Well, here you go. So you've got all the data out there that says, hey, you know what? A raising rate environment is good for the stock market. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Ready, Tigers. Thursday, December 14th, Tim Ord is back to host another stellar live webinar. From 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will delve into the secret science of market tops, helping you, the viewer, with how to effectively call market tops in order to increase your success in trading. Tim Ord has developed this understanding over decades of trading and is ready to impart this knowledge on you. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Tim Ord's secret science of market tops. TFNN, educating investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back up, folks. We've got a couple of requests that have come in. Let's go take a look at those, get those uh, out of the way. Of course, I would love more. So you can give us a call at 877-927-6648. You can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com, and inside the Tigers Den, any ping will do. So the two questions that we've got, the first one is on uh, is on Smuckers. SJM is the uh, ticker symbol. So let's actually get over to that. Look at that chart. Um, should be about right here the set of charts and uh, I'll do my best to describe to you what it is you're looking at realizing that you may be looking at uh, blurry charts out here so this came in from John in Milwaukee he wanted to take a look at the seasonal chart so I'm gonna have to get that going and if you give me a moment we'll get over to take a look at that but first with regard to what's going on with regard to smuckers out here SJM today is going to confirm a TD nine count top and that TD nine count top then, so the pattern will confirm today, it will complete tomorrow. And what that means is then we can see that the oscillator and change line, or I can see, I don't know how easy it is for you to see, but what I can share with you is the oscillator and change line changed colors uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact, went from red to green. When that takes place, and especially when we get a topping pattern out here, which we're going to get today, what odds favor is that us as smuckers will pull back to test that oscillator and change line. Now, that would be a buy point. That would be an entry point as long as price tests and rejects that level. Right now, that's at 117.08. That's not the price point on a pullback where price will be, but just so that you have a feel for that. Uh, if you subscribe to Mastery Probability, I give you the directions on how to uh, how to calculate that for you. So for uh, SJM, you'll be able to do that uh, right away. Uh, so you can understand where that pullback might be coming to. A resistance out here is at 128.66. That's a TD9 count breakdown level. When we look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly form with wave number seven bottom, that's the letter G at the bottom of my screen. You may or may not be able to read it, but that's what, took, what took place the week of November 10th. Now we can see that price is above the top of its weekly profile. So on a weekly basis out here, we've got a breakout. We've got a change in trend. Price is uh, well above its oscillator and change line. It hadn't been above the oscillator and change line since uh, May 12th of uh, this year out here. So we've got a change in trend for sure. But that change in trend is going to be met or should be met or is likely to be met with the first retracement on that daily time frame. 
Uh, so what you could look at on a weekly time, a monthly time frame, that is, uh, you're going to complete a TD9 count bottom this month. And that TD9 count bottom says that Smuckers should make a move up towards 133.28, 137.59 or thereabouts. So what I'd be watching for here, John, is I'd be watching for a retracement. I don't recall if you're in it or you're not in it. You said, where is the buyer? Where is the sell? I think that was your question. <laughs> so the sell um, is likely going to come today or tomorrow. On a 30-minute chart, if we take a look at that here quickly, the 30-minute chart tells us with regard to Smuckers what? It tells us that we have a top. We don't have a topping pattern. No, I take that back. We have a wave number seven potential top. We'll know in about the next nine minutes. As long as price doesn't spike above 125.32, <coughs> that'd be the top that you'd have in place out there. Nonetheless, support is down at 124.31 and below that 120.29. So I expect or anticipate a retracement. I don't know that I'd trade this to the short side, but that's really up to you. Um, what I would do is I'd be looking for, you were looking, where is the buy or where is the sell? Again, that buy is going to be in that 117-ish area. At least that's what we have right now. You know, we have to just simply continue to monitor the chart. So you did ask about the seasonality for Smucker. So let's take a look at that. This is a seasonal pattern for 39 years. So we've got 39 years worth of data. And here, this tells us that we are in its favorable seasonal cycle, which, quite frankly, for Smuckers, looks like it starts right here back in about April, of, um, of uh, which we know that hasn't taken place out here because this thing was making a bottom in, uh, in November. But nonetheless, you ask for the uh, seasonal chart. And the seasonal chart basically gets to be that unfavorable status at the end of the year. Price moves down. It typically moves down into the end of January, kind of follows along with the market and what the market is doing out there. Now, that's over 39 years. Let's uh, shorten it up just a tad. How about 15 years? What do we have? 15 years, really the same kind of cycle type pattern out here with regard to Smuckers. Smuckers, really, it's most unfavorable seasonal time period, John, <coughs> excuse me, begins right around August the 17th or so. And then I would say down in towards the September 30th time frame. So pretty good looking start actually, chart. If we take a look at uh, its worst months, August and September, best month uh, historically, or at least over the last 15 years, has been the March uh, time frame. Doesn't really perform that well on Wednesdays or Thursdays. Uh, typically, again, that's over a 15-year period of time. So thanks for the request. I hope that answered your question. I know your email came in quite late yesterday, so sometimes that's what happens with these ISPs out there. Let's go to our next request. This is coming in from Brent, and Brent is asking about Pfizer. Uh, he's not in it. He was in it for a short period of time. He got out of it last week. We know that Pfizer took a dump. Uh, this morning and that dump this morning is negating a monthly TD nine count bottom and Brent's question is where the Sam heck is support uh, he was looking back at the charts and thinking that maybe the $25 area might be an area of support what I can share with you Brent is that the next TD nine count breakout level for Pfizer on a monthly basis at 2353 and below that it's at 1815 so those would be the two levels of support that I have underneath where we're trading right now. There is obviously an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. That requires a bullish reversal candle to confirm that pattern out there. If we take a look at a weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart does not have any kind of a bottom. Well, whoa, 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 whoa. hold on, Stevie. Take a quick peek here. A, B, C, D. So we're in wave number seven, wave number G out there. Uh, that needs a higher low on a weekly basis. That means you couldn't get a confirmation of that until the end of next Friday out there uh, for the most part. Uh, we can see that uh, the last uh, bottom, a significant bottom, took place in February, February 26th to be exact, of 2021. TD9 count bottom. This formed a TD9 count top. Here's another TD9 count top out here back in December of 2022. Um, you know, if it's uh, waiting for a TD9 count bottom, we've got weeks to go with regard to uh, Pfizer out there. The daily time frame, there's nothing here. Um, yeah, uh, we basically got nothing. So let's do this. So let's take a look. Let's see if we've got on Pfizer, just like we did with John. Let's take a look at PFE and see if there's any historical seasonal data. There most certainly is. And let's see how many years worth of data. We can get 43 years worth of data for Pfizer. And we take a look at it. It's really odd. I'll get that in there. 
So we take a look at Pfizer. It was in the favorable seasonal time period out here, but we know it's not responding to that. But we're in the favorable seasonal time cycle for Pfizer basically begins right around September, the uh, third week of September. The unfavorable seasonal cycle for Pfizer pretty much begins right out of the chute, right around January the 6th, moves lower into uh, March the 17th, get a rally into the uh, sell in May uh, uh, type cycle out there, and then it continues to move uh, lower out there. So that's what we're looking at. We take a look at Pfizer. There's one more chart, Brent, that I can share with you. Unfortunately, it's going to be pretty blurry out here. Not that these charts are apparently aren't blurry. So that's really, quite frankly, a bummer. A big bummer. But here I'll share it with you anyways. And that's the uh, monthly horizontal trading range charts out here. So that's what we've got up on our screen right now. What we can see here is that price has made its way down to a horizontal trading range uh, level at 25.58. There's been five closes at that area. 22 at the 34.51 level. This says if price closed below 25.58, you get down to the 16 area. But you are the only level of support that I've got here, Brent, is this horizontal trading range. Wait till you get some other better signals in the daily and weekly. We'll be right back. It's December, Tigers. That means festivities, decorating, spending time with friends and family, and the TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale. Don't miss your chance to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Once you apply your Tiger Dollars to your account, you will be able to use them for any TFNN product purchase instead of your credit card. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to purchase your Tiger Dollars. Don't miss your chance to receive up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase this holiday season. Every Tiger who purchases Tiger Dollars will also receive a complimentary TFNN Tiger mug with their purchase. Act fast, this sale ends December 17th. Happy Holiday Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. Tigers, tis the season for leveling up your trading skills. Basil Chapman is happy to offer all opening call subscribers a free subscriber webinar, Wednesday, December 20th, 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Basil Chapman will be discussing major sectors and stocks that are coming off their lows in order to prepare your portfolio for 2024. This is a free webinar for all opening call subscribers. If you are not yet a subscriber, visit the front page of TFNN.com today to secure your spot for Wednesday, December 20th. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. 
Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. You got the Dow up 21, S&P 8, uh, NASDAQ 38. Russell's up a couple of points out there. Let's get to our next request out here. Coming in inside the Tiger's Den from John C. Wants to take a look at Tesla. And the question here from John is, where is support? So let's try to answer that question first. We take a look at Tesla. We can see that it's trading now below its bullish structured profile. That's a profile that formed a couple of uh, days ago. And um, so the next level of support, geez, well, first, uh, I'm going to answer this question here. Uh, the, there is a gap to the upside. There's a gap to the upside that took place in November 14th that had 149 million shares. Now, we've been trading for two hours, 46 million. So if we say 50, it's 150, basically. So you're coming into that uh, breakout area with a similar type volume. So one level of support could be could be the top of the candle from November 13th. That's up at 225.40. Um, as far as other levels of support on the daily time frame, I don't have them other than swing points that we would take a look at. The weekly chart is starting to trade right now below the bottom of its profile. I don't know where it's going to end up on Friday, but if Tesla did close below 232.35, the next area of support would be 164.35. Now, there's a swing point before price would get there, so we'd be taking a look at that. That's the swing point from November 3rd. Volume there, about 621 million shares. So far for the week, you've done 240. On a monthly time frame, the support area is where you're trading right now. And where you're trading right now is basically into the top of the profile, 229.53. It's not like that is really held as a key level of support or resistance. So I think that's kind of a weak one out there. Um, oh, don't tell me I'm on the wrong screen. Oh, my God. Oh, Lordy, 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 Lordy. Lordy, lordy. Okay, so here we're back to it, John. Even though you can't see what it is you're now supposed to see out here, uh, what you should be able to see is that price is below the bottom of its daily profile, 236.33. Here's your breakout. Here's your candle session from November 13th. The high of that session could be support, 225.40. Other than that, we've got basically just uh, swing points to take a look at. Weekly chart, you can see that profile level. Here's your breakout area, 164.35. But we'd have to see how what price is doing as it deals with the November 3rd swing point. And here on the monthly time frame chart, you can see how price is dealing with the top of that profile. But it's hard for me to say after looking at the price action at that level uh, that that's been a strong area of support or resistance out there. So I know that doesn't really give you what you're looking for. What I can share with you, though, is that it looks like we're going to get an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. The swing point that we're looking at that's being taken out as we speak is from December the 1st. The volume there was 121 million. We're already at 45 today. So odds favor, if the volume keeps up, you're going to get a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. And John C., I think that's really the better piece of information for you than where support is at, only because I'm struggling to find some really good support levels for you. Because if you do get this confirmed A to B equals CD, and you'll get that if we get a close below the B point. That's a trading day of December 1st. That low was 231.90. So we close below that, we'll have an A to B equals CD, and what you'll be looking for is a bullish reversal candle form. Now, the price projection is somewhere around 225 and change out there. That's not as important as what you're looking for next, because until you get a bullish reversal candle, odds favor that price is going to continue to move lower out there. So with regard to Tesla, what you'll be looking for, if you're looking uh, to enter a, a long trade here, is you want to go ahead and uh, wait for the Gartley buy pattern to form, the buy the D point pattern. So that's what I've got when I take a look at Tesla. I hope that provided you with the information that you were looking for out there. And uh, thanks for struggling with the uh, charts. Let's go take a look at Adobe for Dan. Dan is looking for about a 40 to $50 move to the downside, if I read that correctly. I hope that I did, Dan. And so he's looking for some type of signal to say when that's going to get started. Turns out that if you do get a bearish reversal candle today, and at the moment you've got a bearish sash candle, we don't know what it will look like at 4 p.m., but if you did get that bearish reversal candle, that would be your first sign that, okay, maybe we've got a top that is starting. What do you mean, maybe we've got a top, Steve-O? You said that would be a top. I did say that would be a top. Um, what we're taking a look at here, though, is that price is 
Okay, uh, Jacob, uh, for the chart issue. So when we go to break in about three minutes, I'll take a look at that and uh, maybe just stay with me here. This is Jacob. We're trying to solve this problem. I want you to check my, my screen rate or what have you. But let me just finish taking a look at Adobe here. Thank you, Jacob, for topping in on that. So now we take a look at it. The, the reason that the first issue that you've got here, Dan, is right now where, where Adobe, well, I believe where Adobe is printing out at. Let me just look on my other charts, make sure I don't have much of a delay here, A, D, B, E. And that is that it's trading right now. It's found support at the top of its daily profile. So that's a key level of support to be watching. That's at the uh, 6 2246 level we're at 62263 right now so if price closes below that then that's going to be an indication to you that okay this has started with regard to moving to the downside because we'd have price below the top of a profile resistance level and then we'd have price below its oscillator and change line it tells us it's lost momentum but the deal is that where support is is between 608 at 612.35. Now we can see that that level failed to hold um, last week. So maybe it's not really a great support level. So your 40 to $50 move here, if you're at about 625 right now, to get you to 575, what we can share with you is 583.36 is the daily TD9 count breakout area. On a weekly basis, we are not getting any kind of a signal of a top. We do have a Rhodes Mentum indicator pattern that's been triggered. It's been triggered for quite a while out there. What's been missing from it is a bearish reversal candle. That's what's needed to confirm that type of pattern. We take a look at a monthly time frame chart. The monthly time frame chart for Adobe says over time, this wants to trade up to 678.78. Why do you say that, Steve-O? I say that because last month, it totally negated its TD9 count top immediately that tells us about a strong upward momentum move and that strong upward momentum move we take a look at the weekly chart too that says this really wants to get up to 678 i'd say odds favor that this wants to make a 50 dollar move to the upside more so than it wants to make a 50 dollar move to the downside but nonetheless you are you may a topping signal today so watch that Watch whether price closes back inside that profile. And if it does, it may get back towards that 608. It may even get to the 583 level. But if for, in order for that to happen, you can see right now at 608.23, or I'm going to share with you what's happening at 608.23 is the weekly oscillator and change line. Price is most certainly going to have to get below that to entertain a uh, move of $50 to the downside. But whenever that gets done out here, when, whenever, you know, and, and who knows when, when that might be, because maybe it's really not going to move much lower. I'd say Adobe is looking like it has more of a $50 move to the upside than it does to the downside out there. Real quickly here before we go to break, let me see if Adobe has a seasonal uh, set of data out here, ADBE, to see where we're at in its. Here we go. We've got Adobe. Let's take a look how many years we've got. We've got 37 worth 37 years out here. And typically, Adobe forms a bottom like tomorrow, moves higher into the end of the year. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Hopefully, we'll solve my monitor problem. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. I think we're up and running. Got that screen issue resolved. That was a black background screen zone. I'm going to switch over to the white ones right now. You should see the Adobe charts out there, so it should be a little bit clearer for everybody as they were following along with me as we were taking a look at Adobe. So now you can take a look at those. You can snap the shot at uh, and uh, put it in your uh, basket if you want out there. So let's move on. So thank you, uh, Jacob for solving that problem out there and thanks uh, everybody for putting up with this sorry that we had the issue but glad that we resolved it so let's go take our next request out there may be others that have come in but i uh, kind of have been multitasking but there is a request to take like light sweet crude and i'd asked the question and i don't know if it was answered because i was too busy looking at other things which i was really asking john uh, who was asking about it if he traded the futures or not and I don't think I have the response on it. But we're taking like light sweet crude. The reason is because it would then be dependent upon what contracts we'd be looking at. Uh, and uh, because we may have a uh, different signal. So we'll, we'll even take a look at that. But here's a January contract for light sweet crude. And today we will get a bar number nine of a TD9 count if and only if price closes below the close of bar number five. And that's not where we're at right now. The close of bar number five is 69.34. If price closed above 69.34, this pattern goes away, and what we would then need is a bullish reversal candle to confirm a buy the D point pattern. So where price closes today is going to be very key, John, as to what the actual patterns are out here. Um, and that's on the daily time frame. And if I switch panels, now that I can freely switch panels out there and know that we're going to see uh, good data, good charts out there, let's switch these panels. Let's go take a look at this set of panels. Now, this are these are, I should say, this are. How about that? That's a beautiful way to communicate. But these are the four charts that make up the holdings with inside USO, which is a totally set of different holdings if we were to take a UCO out there. So uh, if we take, and UCO is uh, when I really started investigating that over the weekend, that is a real booger to try to figure out what it's doing because of so many other um, ETFs or indices that it has uh, inside it. This is much clearer, but you still have to take a look at what's going on with the four different uh, equity, uh, not equity, but light sweet crude future contracts. So <coughs> January, we've already taken a look at. In the case of <coughs> February, which I think is the primary dominant contract inside of USO. You'd have to go uh, take a look at that. It's also got a TD9 count bottom. 
But today, it's going to need to close below 69.59. We're at 69.81 right now. If it closes above 69.51, this whole pattern goes away, but it will still maintain the Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal. And if this were to form a bullish reversal candle, that would confirm a, po a, 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 a bottom pattern. If we take a look at the March 2024 contract, we're in wave number seven right now. That just simply needs a higher low. That could take place tomorrow, and that would confirm a bottom. It's got a TD9 count that will confirm if price closes the day below bar number five. That's 69.81. We're well above that as we speak right now. The June 2024 contract, same thing, TD9 count, but price must close the day above, or below, really. It must close below. 7020. We're at 7068 on that contract right now. So we're 7068 there. March, we're at 7116. Oh, I take that back. We're at 7068. We're at 7013 on March. We're at 6988 in February. We're at 6963 in uh, January out there. So with regard to light sweet crude and what it's doing, I think you and I have to wait to figure out what it's doing here. We'll get that information released to us today, and then we'll have a much better idea. So if it's okay with you, and please remind me, let's come back and take a look at this uh, come tomorrow out there. If I switch back to the other charts, just to take a look at what's going on from an intraday standpoint, and we'll do that here momentarily, we'll get back to the other charts out there. And now we take a look at, for example, a 30-minute time frame chart. This negated a TD9 count top. It did that during this, last, well, it did that uh, a while ago. It did that uh, at 10 o'clock this morning. So this is suggesting that light sweet crude should rally further. Well, if that's the case, then these patterns that we just took a look at on the daily time frame are not going to come to fruition. If we look at other time frame charts, maybe you're going to get a TD9 count uh, top on the 60-minute time frame that uh, takes place between 12 and 2. So maybe uh, that what uh, Powell uh, says does uh, is going to impact light sweet crude out there. But this suggests that top doesn't really uh, form here for a couple of hours. Uh, things look good on the 120 minute time frame chart. When I say good, we're trading above profile. Uh, you're trading with inside profile to Rose Mentum indicator bottom on the four hour time frame chart. 7004 is the key level. So everything is really in place here for light sweep crude to, uh, ra uh, to form a bottom. But we really need to actually see a bit of a pullback today. Price to close at a lower level to then give us that um, those uh, bottoming patterns out there. Now, if we take a look at light sweep crude, and we take, as soon as I can find it, give me a second here to find it. I know it's right up here, light sweet crude. And we take a look at its seasonal time frame. And the seasonal time frame, we've got 32 years worth of data. What we know is that light sweet crude typically forms a bottom, a first bottom right around December 10th. And in fact, it did that this year. It did that and it bounced. This formed a, on a daily basis, this formed a buy the D point pattern. It did this with these three candle sessions, three River Morning Star. And what price did was it ran right up into resistance, that red oscillator and change line. Now, the cool thing about that is that's following the seasonal pattern. And then the seasonal pattern says, well, it should then pull back and form another bottom right around December 20th. Well, is that the pattern? Now, if the TD9 counts don't form today, then I'd say, okay, we, we resort back to that and we say, you know what, maybe we're not looking for a bottom in late sweet crude until we get towards the middle of uh, toward another week or so out here. Um, but let's do this. Let's let the market tell us what it's, uh, it's going to do, and then we'll come back. We take a look at that, whether that's – well, we'll do that uh, tomorrow. So, John, I hope that that helped you out. That's not too much bumbling. We had a request from Thomas, and his question was, what's the worst-case scenario for Goldilocks out there? And that's your gold and silver. But let's just answer that with regard to gold. I thought that I did that yesterday. Uh, we've got the gold charts up here. You can see with regard to gold, we were talking about TD9 counts. A bar number eight is going to form today. Um, it, well, it would require quite a rally to negate the signal. Tomorrow, we could get a confirmed TD9 count as long as gold closes below 2014.50. And that's important because you could get this TD9 count right at its breakout level of 1979.30. So the first answer to your question, which I'm not giving you the worst case right now, what I'm doing is giving to the play-by-play -play on the daily time frame because gold is signaling it could form a bottom. We need to see that pattern complete. Uh, it's a bit too early to say whether that's going to unfold or not. Now, even though the pattern completes, it could still fail. Or if the pattern doesn't complete and price starts getting below 1979, then at least on a daily basis, what we do is we step down to the next level of support. That would be 1876.80. But here's what I'm really looking at to truly answer your question. And that's this. And I know we touched on this yesterday. 
we take a look at the normal dance steps of any instrument out here, what we can see is that typically you get, especially in bull markets, that's where we're thinking gold may be in, is a new bull market out there, you typically get pullbacks of two bars. It doesn't matter what time frame. And here's the monthly time frame. Well, it looks like December could be bar number one to the downside. And so that would then tell me that we would see some type of bottom. You're asking about worst case. I'm giving you from a timing standpoint that we would be in a two-month pullback. And that says we could or should see a bottom form in gold, a significant bottom in the January time frame. But we got to take things one step at a time, Thomas. Right now, let's try to figure out what's going on in the daily time frame. That larger thing comes to fruition when patterns fail and other support levels fail. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Ready, Tigers. Thursday, December 14th, Tim Ord is back to host another stellar live webinar. From 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will delve into the secret science of market tops, helping you, the viewer, with how to effectively call market tops in order to increase your success in trading. Tim Ord has developed this understanding over decades of trading and is ready to impart this knowledge on you. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Tim Ord's secret science of market tops. TFNN, educating investors. Ho, ho, ho. Oh. It's December, Tigers. That means festivities, decorating, spending time with friends and family, and the TFNN Tiger Dollar Holiday Sale. Don't miss your chance to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Once you apply your Tiger Dollars to your account, you will be able to use them for any TFNN product purchase instead of your credit card. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to purchase your Tiger Dollars. Don't miss your chance to receive up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase this holiday season. Every Tiger who purchases Tiger Dollars will also receive a complimentary TFNN Tiger mug with their purchase. Act fast, this sale ends December 17th. Happy Holiday Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Welcome back 
back, uh, folks. We got uh, we'll, we'll close out the show looking at Microsoft and ARM for Nancy and for Duncan Steve. So, Nancy, uh, with regard to Microsoft, on a five-minute basis, we got a uh, wave number seven top. That's letter G. Price pulled back and tested support. That support level held. That was the bottom of its profile. There's a new profile that is formed, and you just have a consolidation with inside of that. We're looking at real granular short term. 373.94 support. 374.89 and 374.72 are your resistance levels. If price closes above that, it should rally. Otherwise, it just may be consolidating with inside that level. Now, that's what's going on in the very short-term time frame. If we take a look at what's going on in a daily time frame with regard to Microsoft, it's uh, back uh, below the uh, top of its profile, so it never closed above it. It traded above it. Uh, so that says watch that level, that level being 374.75. If uh, price is unable to close above that, we could have a good old-fashioned consolidation with price pulling back to test the bottom of its profile between 365.16 and 366.76 out there. That's really what I see when I take a look at Microsoft. I hope that that helps you out. If we take a look at um, the next request, which is ARM holdings out here, not a lot of data. So that not a lot of data makes it a little bit difficult to analyze what's going on. But we can say at this stage here, it says road momentum indicator signaled, no bearish reversal candle. Price, if it closes below its oscillator and change line, that's currently at 63.95, Steve-O. If price closes below that, we could see a move back to profile support between 54.62 and 55.76. But first, it's got to get below these swing points out here, and that's the one from December the 5th, and that would be at 60.37 out there. Volume on that candle session, 6.7 million shares today. So far, it's done 3 million shares. So it's pulling back with volume. So I'd watch that low. That low out there is at 60.37. Folks, uh, thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned. We've got great programming lined up for you. I'll be back with you on Terrific Thursday. Please have a wonderful Wednesday and be safe out there.